Tana Traore, and I'm an independent curator, but more importantly, I'm the curator of this series, the Backstory series. And with me is the wonderful Carolyn Oberst, the artist of this series, and behind her are her beautiful paintings. So before we get started, I was wondering if you could stand beside the painting so we could get a sense of scale. Mm -hmm. So they're 48 by 60 inches. They have a, a real presence in the room that doesn't show so much when I'm closer to the camera. Absolutely. And it's important to note that you actually have smaller paintings in the series as well. Oh, absolutely, yes, of course. So congratulations on a beautiful show. When I look at these paintings, I really feel like I'm entering into your dreams. And I was wondering if you could talk about what I'm actually looking at, what is on the canvas? Well, this is a, what they would call a pastiche mm -hmm. or a, a collection of images that are disparate, like more like a collage base. And so I select the elements based on their form, their emotional resonance, their expression, the atmosphere, sometimes it's a person. Um, and then I also connect that with things from our culture, you know, images that come out of the collective culture that we're in now. So I try to look around me and see what's happening and put that in the painting. Um, but the choices are completely subconscious. So I have tons of images that, and I just look through them and I try not to be too conscious about what I'm picking and just kind of let my subconscious decide. And then I start putting it together. And um, so I think, that that's maybe why they have a dreamlike quality since the images are formed subconsciously like dreams and the meaning might not be perfectly clear or obvious, but they reverberate within us and give us something to think about like dreams do. That's my yeah, absolutely. Uh, thought. Yeah. And let's talk about the forms because when I first saw the paintings, I saw these shapes as figures. Um, and so I, I, maybe referred to the paintings as figurative. And the more we talked, I realized that the, the shapes in, the, in, in kind of the form of humans aren't necessarily humans, but more signifiers um, and really meant just to complete the composition. So can you talk a little bit more about that? And if you consider the paintings to be abstract, figurative, somewhere in between? Well, the problem for me is that when you say figurative, you tend, one tends to think of realistic figures, you know, um, mold, modeled and shaded and, and painted to look like real people. Right. Um, but even if your, your work is more abstract than that, anytime there's any kind of figure in a painting, they're gonna call it figurative. Right. But for me, it's an abstract composition. The figures are, I'm treating them as elements in a composition, not so much for who they are, but for their shape, for you know, what they inspire in me and then combining them with abstract shapes and things drawn from culture. So it's a combination of things. Um, and then when I go to do a drawing, I kind of let the drawing, and I start with some things and then I add and subtract, you know, it, the whole thing is a subconscious kind of activity. Right. Can you talk a little bit more about what the subconscious means to you, but really how the subconscious guides your hand and helps you create this work? Well, I mean, I think that's where all art comes from. It, it's hard to be, you know, you need to get into kind of almost an alternate, altered state or a meditative state, or at least I do, to make these things. And then I, you know, the, the shapes and everything that goes together in the drawing. Um, and the drawing is really minimal. It's just sort of like a pencil drawing. I try not to do too much with that. I'm just trying to get a structure to hang, to start working with. And then once the color starts, then it becomes a whole other ball game and things can change and move around. And then the color really um, defines the painting. Mm. You know? And that also is a subconscious choice. I try to let the painting tell me what it wants to be. Yeah, I'm so glad that you brought up your color because for me, the color is the most mesmerizing part of, of the work. And I know that you use color in really clever ways all over the painting, um, for example, to create depth and space. So can you talk a little bit more about how you use color almost as a strategy, but also what color means for you in this work? 
Well, color means everything. I mean, that, to me, that's what, why I'm painting. Uh, so I get to play with color, but um, you know, and the fact that you can create atmosphere and space and a sense of movement and all these things on a flat surface with just some color and a brush is, is magical. You know, and sometimes I do something I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> so um, I like to also, you know, have a sense of um, encouraging the viewer's eye to move around the painting. So I have ways of using the color in different parts of the painting, and then it kind of encourages this <clears throat> this looking at everything, so that people are feel like there's some reason to stand there and look for a while and try to see what it's about rather right. than you know an image that you one second you know what that is and you move on um color is emotional and it's definitely an intuitive process um and as i said once i get going with the painting it starts to tell me what it wants what colors it wants and what it wants me to do the first time i came to your studio you actually recited a quote by Mike Kelly. I was wondering if you could share it. I think it's just so perfect. Yeah, I found this very, not that long ago, like maybe last year or something, and I saw a, a, a video about him. Um, you know, I really like Mike Kelly. Um, and this is, he said, it's important to be sensitive to the life force of the painting. And I thought, wow, that's exactly what I feel is that I'm trying to commune with the life. The painting de develops its own life force. And if you're there into it, you can communicate with that and be sensitive to it. And I thought, wow, we're doing the same. We, well, he's not <laughs> with us anymore, but we were doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the title of the series, the backstory series. What, what does that title mean to you and to the work and how does it kind of um, join all the work into a cohesive body? Well, I like the idea of backstory because it kind of implies that there's an underlying element, but it's a little mysterious and it's not quite defined. So it encourages the viewer to think about, you know, implied meanings or connections or what might be going on. Um, and so I just thought it worked really well. The the paintings are connected by um, a vocabulary of elements that I use in each painting, not the same elements in each painting, but the way of working in each painting. And then the color sensibility travels through. Um, I think you can identify my work in that way. So it's a cohesive series, I think. Yeah, I totally agree. And you mentioned uh, briefly um, the fact that you want people to kind of make their own connections. And I know that you really, it's important for you, for the viewer to come to their own conclusion. You don't want to be too obvious with what you give them. And though that's true, I know that you also must have something that you would like viewers to go away with. And I know that for me, I really would love for viewers to have the understanding that an artist of your age can make the paintings that we're looking at right now, because you have mentioned that people often are surprised when they see your paintings and then they see you because they're ageist. <laughs> um, and I just have a huge issue with that because I don't understand why an artist of any age can't make relevant, fresh, exciting work. So that's what I would like people to go away with, that understanding. So I was wondering if you have anything that you'd like people to go away with. Well, I want them to have an experience when they're standing in front of the painting. I wanted to, um, stimulate ideas or emotions. I want them to feel something. Uh, and because the work is basically abstract, their, their ideas can change as they're looking. And I find my ideas change over time just because I, I, I look at the work all the time and I find new connections or things, or maybe there are none. I mean, it's really, as I said, up to each person, but I hope that the Experience takes the viewer out of their ordinary realm of looking and in inspires interesting thoughts and feelings. That's what I'm hoping for. And at the same time, I'd like them to relish the color and uh, what I think of as excite their eyeballs. <laughs> and uh, that it, so it's a visceral experience and an enjoyable experience, even though it's thought provoking and serious. Well, I think that you've been extremely ex successful in exciting the eyeballs. 
um, especially mine. So thank you for that. And congratulations on this beautiful show again. Thank you so much. It's great to see you. Great to see you.